Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel. I'm Andrea and in this video I want to demonstrate some techniques that will be useful to you when making the macaw wings show. In this pattern you will be at first working in the foundation chain and I will show you how to make short rows into this foundation chain. You will also be making increases at the beginning of the work right in the beginning chain. I will also show you how to work in eyelets. All of these techniques you can use for other patterns as well, but all of these are useful for you to know for making this pattern. If you want more information about this pattern, where to get the PDF with all the instructions, you can find in the description a link to the blog post where I tell you all about this pattern and where you can get it if you want to make your own version. First, I want to show you how to start with a chain which is longer than usual. Normally, you just start with the chain required to make the stitches necessary in the first row. But for this pattern, we start with a longer chain and then we keep picking up stitches as we go along in the pattern to create the first feather in the pattern. I will be demonstrating with this chunk yarn so you can see the stitches well and with an 8mm hook. This is a bamboo Tunisian crochet hook. I already made a chain, so you can start with chaining as many as you want. I have 16 chains here, so you can start with 16 chains, but we will not be using them all. For the first row, we usually pick up stitches on the hook by going through the back bumps of the chains to make the foundation row. But in the case of this pattern, and probably other patterns in the future, we don't pick up all the stitches in the chains and some stay unworked. For example, in this case I picked up six loops on the hook and we have the starting loop and these count as five Tunisian crochet stitches and the last stitch which we don't count when making short rows. The short row return is simple, you just yarn over and pull through two until you are left with one loop on the hook. And we will be using this throughout the macaw wings pattern where you have short rows. So now we have one short row, but we have a lot of these unworked chains. What we do next is following the pattern. You may have other instructions, but I will just make five Tunisian simple stitches using the stitches that are already in the foundation. And now comes the fun part. What do you do now? Well, you cannot work in the end of the short row because this is not a stitch that we usually count. Normally, we work in the stitch that's under this diagonal stitch here, but here we don't have a stitch to work into. So instead, we work into the same back bump where we put that stitch. That's the back bump of the chain below. So we pick up a loop in there and continue making as many stitches as we need to do to finish the row. And in my case, I'm making three more stitches by picking up loops in the back bumps. And then I'll make a short row return again. This way you don't have to increase by three at the end of a row. So you have a nice flowing increase as the project grows in width. Let's do this again. So in this case now, you can see the short row, it ends here. You have the five stitches and then you have the row above it. For the next row I will make eight simple stitches. And now we have the same issue. There is no stitch to work into in the row below, so we work in the back bump of the chain where we put the end of the short row on the previous row. Then I will make seven simple stitches or I will pick up seven loops in the back bumps of the next chains to use up all the chains. And now we have the end of the chain, so we do a regular return pass. So we chain one and then we yarn over, pull through two to the beginning of the row to return. And now I have shown you how to increase from very few stitches to many stitches without using increases. So instead of using increases, we used short rows. And doing this will help you, for example, if you need to make a garment or something which requires a lot of increases at the end of the row. 
And now I want to demonstrate how to start a foundation row from chains and how to add eyelets to it. So in this pattern, you begin with increases right at the beginning of the first feather and they start from the foundation row. You don't have a separate foundation row and then you start the pattern. So how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. You know, as you always pick up one loop in the back bumps of each of the stitches, now you don't. You yarn over and then you pick up a loop in the back bump. You have to do this three times for this particular pattern. So you yarn over and pick up a loop in the back bump of the next chain. Then we yarn over and pick up a loop in the back bump of the next chain. Like this you have made six stitches in three chains. And you can continue doing this depending on what your pattern says or just continue picking up stitches as required by your pattern. So you can do a lot of things with the foundation chain. Let me do a return pass and show you what this looks like when the row is finished. As you can see the row has a tendency to open up because there are too many stitches here. This is good because in the pattern you will have an increase that will create the feather shape. So you will be working in all of these stitches. And now I want to show you how to work in eyelets which are a central part of the macaw wings shawl pattern. So in this pattern we work with eyelets a lot and we have Tunisian simple stitches and Tunisian pearl stitches worked directly into the eyelets. So how do you do that? I will demonstrate and I will also show you how to not miss the eyelets when you want to work in them. So I have here the sample that I made for the previous segment and we have three eyelets here. One eyelet, two eyelets, three eyelets. You can find the eyelets by poking your finger through the fabric, literally just trying to open them up. They are easier to find on thinner yarn but the main giveaway for them is this downward V shape that you see here. In Tunisian simple stitches you don't see that, you, have, you see a vertical bar. But in eyelets you have this V. This is important to remember because sometimes you might miss the starting eyelet. For example, at the beginning of each section in the Macaw Wings show, you have an eyelet that you have to work into. So to make sure you don't miss that, I put tips in the pattern at every section where you need to do this. So to make a Tunisian simple stitch in an eyelet, all you need to do is insert the hook and pick up a loop. That's all. That's a Tunisian simple stitch. And when I do the return pass, you will see it looks exactly like a Tunisian simple stitch. I have a Tunisian simple stitch here and now I have another eyelet. I'll make another simple stitch in by picking up a loop. In some patterns you will see this stitch called a full stitch, but that's not a full stitch because full stitches are worked between stitches. So we are not working between stitches here, we are working in an eyelet. And for ease of writing and of reading my patterns, I always call these Tunisian simple stitches in eyelets where you insert the hook and pick up a loop. Now what happens if you have to work a purled stitch in an eyelet? If you try it, you bring the yarn to the front and you insert the hook and pick up a loop, it looks like crap. <laughs> you don't want to use this method because it looks really bad, because you go around the return chain. Instead what you want to do is bring the yarn to the front, insert the hook under the front diagonal bar here and finish the purl stitch like that. In this yarn you don't see it well, but in thinner yarn that is used for the pattern where I added this kind of uh, purl stitch worked in the eyelet, you will still see the eyelets very nicely. Now let me finish this row so I can show you what the return pass looks like. Let's do a return pass. When the return pass is done, you see all the stitches that were, are worked in the eyelets look as what their name says. These two look like Tunisian simple stitches and this one looks like a pearl stitch because that's what it is. You can't see the eyelets very well right now, but it's not very important. For some parts of the Macaw Wings shawl pattern, the eyelets are there only for increasing, 
not necessarily for decoration. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you can use this information for other projects as well. And if you want to try out the McCallings shawl pattern, check out the links in the description and make sure you sign up for my email updates to get a coupon to get the pattern with 20% off. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!